Welcome back to Shanky JRPGs, everyone, and welcome to my review of Disgaea 7 Vows of the Virtuous. Released on October 3rd in North America and October 6th in Europe for the PlayStation 4 and 5, Switch, and PC via Steam. Disgaea 7 Vows of the Virtuous is the latest entry in NIS America's long-running strategy RPG series. All the footage that you will be seeing today has been taken from the Nintendo Switch version of the game. Speaking of which, big thanks to NIS America for providing me with a review copy of the game. So strap yourselves in, grab yourselves a drink, and get ready to hear my thoughts and opinions on Disgaea 7 Vows of the Virtuous. I'm not going to go too into the story of Disgaea 7. After all, it is best experienced from scratch with no knowledge of what's to come. I will, however, go into the very on-the-surface basics. You play the role of Fuji, a lone samurai from the netherworld on a mission to collect the seven weapons of origin to defeat the Waido Shogunate. The story of Disgaea 7 is as ridiculous and over-the-top with its humor as each previous entry in the series. Disgaea 7 gets rid of the classic netherworld that we've grown to love that has been used in previous entries, and instead changes it up with an eastern-style netherworld. This game heavily leans into the feudal Japan era and makes it feel fresh, almost as if it's a reboot. It's amazing how just changing the setting of a game can make it feel so much more original despite the mechanics being almost identical to previous entries. Speaking of gameplay mechanics... So, as I stated before, the Disgaea franchise is a strategy RPG series. It stands out in the sense that it's more or less number porn. Most games have stats that max out at 99, 255, or 999. Disgaea, meanwhile, it's not uncommon to have stats in the tens to hundreds of millions, and damage numbers in the similar range. Most mechanics from previous entries return, but Disgaea 7 introduces a couple new mechanics. The first mechanic is Hell Mode. Hell Mode is available to wielders of the Seven Weapons of Origin. It is a mode that grants a special stat buff and allows the use of a move only available in that specific hell mode. It lasts for one turn and can easily turn the tide of battle. The second new mechanic introduced in battles is Jumbify. Jumbify is like if you decide you wanted kaiju battles in a Disgaea game. When you choose to Jumbify, you pick one of the four sides of the combat arena and you grow into a giant version of yourself, massively increasing your attack power and letting you attack in a 7x7 square making it easy to take out large groups of enemies in a single blow. Enemies can jumpify as well. However, to my experience, outside of bosses, enemies only jumpify if you do it first. It's not really strategy, but it's fun to grow up to be a giant and crush the enemies like they're little ants. The item world returns in Disgaea 7, however, it's been changed lately. For those unaware, item world is where you can enter an item and climb floors to power up that item. In previous centuries, you could climb 10 floors for a common item, 25 floors for rare items, and 100 floors for a legendary item. However, in Disgaea 7, common, rare, and legendary items only have 10, 20, and 30 floors accordingly. The big change comes with item reincarnation. Item reincarnation works like your character reincarnation, which you can reduce the item's level to 1, but with increased stats. Once reincarnated, you can go through the item world for that item again, allowing it to get even higher stats than before. It's a bit of a change, but it technically allows for infinite growth of that item. Also, tell me I'm not alone in this, but when playing Disgaea games, does anyone else find themselves just grinding out one character and just soloing the entire game with that character? I don't think to this date I have played through a Disgaea game without being severely overleveled and destroying the final boss in a single attack. It's incredibly anticlimactic, but oh, so very, very satisfying. Okay, so the graphics and performance was one thing I was incredibly nervous about. For a little bit of context, Disgaea 6 on the Nintendo Switch ran terribly. There's no sugarcoating it. Like, we're not talking, oh, it's having trouble hitting 30 FPS. Disgaea 6 on the Nintendo Switch was lucky if it hit 15 FPS. Luckily, Disgaea 7 is not nearly as bad. That's not to say it's a perfect 30 FPS at all times, but the frame rate is serviceable at best. Most of the frame rate issues are at the base and not in battle. The only time I really noticed the frame rate in battle was during the spell Braveheart and during Jumbify. Though for the most part during battle, the frame rate is fine. The game offers a performance mode and a graphics mode. However, I didn't notice it looking any better in graphics mode over performance. Just leave it on performance. 
These issues are only present in the Switch version of the game. On the PS4, PS5, and PC, the game runs smooth as butter, though on graphics mode on those versions, the game does run at 30 FPS. Again, I just stick with performance. The game looks beautiful in performance mode, there's no need for a higher resolution. Alright, now as for the music. The OST of Disguise 7 was composed by Takeshi Matsumoto, also known for The Cruel King and the Great Hero and Last Claudia. Disgaea 7 was his first time composing for the Disgaea series, and you can definitely tell, as the soundtrack feels very different from previous entries. Now, as someone who knows absolutely nothing about music and just takes it in as he hears it, I personally really enjoyed the music of Disgaea 7. There was a lot of wind chimes in the music adding into the whole eastern setting that the game has, and occasionally you almost get like a soft rock feel to the music. That's usually reserved for boss battles, however, it fits it perfectly. The music isn't by any means amazing or mind-blowing, but it was enjoyable, and that's okay. Now, as somebody who has spent over 100 hours with Disgaea 7, the length and pacing is a bit more complicated than just beating the final boss. With Disgaea, the main story is there, but it's not the main focus. It's relatively short, but the main meat and potatoes of the game is in post-game. The main game of Disguise 7 took me about 20 to 25 hours, but post-game involves a lot of item world grinding as well as super bosses that require insane amount of grinding. This is where those ridiculously high stats come to mind. The post-game of Disguise 7 is much more extensive than 6 was, which is a good thing because Disguise 6 had an incredibly lackluster post-game. It was disappointing. I'm glad NIS America put more effort into the post-game of Disgaea 7, adding almost infinite levels of enjoyment. It would not be unheard of to have 300-700 hours of gameplay by the time you're done everything that the post-game has to offer. Overall, Disgaea 7 is a great breath of fresh air to a seemingly diminishing series. The new mechanics, while some can be gimmicky, others were really fun to play around with and it made the game enjoyable. I would happily suggest this game to any fans of strategy RPGs and over-the-top animations and humor. Are you going to be picking up the Sky of 7? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's the meat and potatoes, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and have a wonderful day.